I come from Barcelona, Benedictine nun, and I would like to say something to Kate, the question that Kate raised about the faith. And I would like to say that for a long time, and that was more, mostly in the pre-modern period, religion was trying to prove by reason that God existed. Mm -hmm. In the modern philosophy times, we have learned that reason cannot prove either that God exists mm -hmm. or that God mm -hmm. does not exist. So, Kate, I'm afraid to say you do have a faith if you believe that God does not exist. That's like saying, I believe in ghosts or I believe in not ghosts. That it's, that it's simply the fact is either you believe in ghosts or you don't believe in ghosts. So I, I don't have to believe in the absence of ghosts. But I don't believe that, in ghosts and I don't believe in God. But if you say that uh, reason cannot prove that God exists or either doesn't exist, then you have a reason, reasonable or rational position. But if you are convinced that, and I'm saying that not only to make a polemics, but to say, given that reason cannot make the decision whether well, God exists, token, oh, no, one second, given that God, reason cannot make the decision whether God exist or not, then it might be, according to reason, it might be that God exists. Then, if God exists, and I would believe that, you wouldn't believe that, but those are beliefs, not reason. If God exists, then what you should be asking, and I think any of us who call ourselves feminists, as I do, I'm a feminist theologian, should be asking of ourselves is, how do you behave in your religion? How do you behave in a tradition that, I agree, has a lot of misogyny? I'm Catholic, Roman Catholic, and I think not only the tradition, not only the patriarchy of the old times, but today my faith has a structure that is misogynist and is patriarchal. And I don't like that. And I'm there and I'm trying to change that. Okay, can I, can I respond to that? Can I respond? She's three to me. Words, yeah. Yeah. Can, I, yes, can I just respond Kate, Kate to that? First, uh, so, so, so just two things. So firstly, when you say that, that somehow I should say I believe in, in, in non-religion, it's interesting because you introduce yourself as a Catholic, but you don't say, uh, I'm somebody who doesn't believe in the Muslim God and I don't believe in the Sikh God. You, you, you don't introduce the things that you don't believe. You introduce only. So that's one thing. Um, but secondly, it's interesting, and I'm really glad that you said and, and, and openly admitted that the history uh, of Catholicism is, is deeply misogynist, and a lot of, uh, in, in, fact, in fact, all major religions around the world have a history that is deeply misogynist. And, and here's the thing, you know, how do we break free from that? Well, we can work and, and poke around with these different verses and try to find a way to empower the more liberal elements. Or we can go, hey, this is the 21st century. This stuff isn't true. Let's get rid of it and build an equal society from scratch. Let's go. Isn't true. You are assuming that this is something you say from reason, and that's why I made the point. But I would like to it, say something else, true. which is if I thought the tradition was only misogynist and only patriarchal, I don't know if I would stay or not, but I am a Benedictine nun. My community comes from the 12th century. Since the 12th century until the 21st, there is an unbroken chain of tradition of a community where women, sometimes up to 100, now we are 35, are living together. Where do we have in the civil society a similar transmission of women's initiatives? This community was started in the 12th century probably by uh, prostitutes that decided to change their way of life and start, but I don't mind how we started as a community. The thing is, from the 12th so, century so, until today, so I mean to say that within the re different religious traditions, and in my case it's the Catholic Church, there are spaces where I personally have experienced a more amplitude of real day-to-day -day freedom than I'm a physician too, so in the hospitals or in the university, I have encountered these glass ceilings and I acknowledge that. I acknowledge the problems in the Catholic yeah, Church. Uh, but okay, as I said, this is not only the answer. Really briefly, because the answer I want to bring in Marina and we've how got do lots we of find videos. places where women can get together in a secular atheist world? We design them ourselves. We choose whatever we want, and we don't I, need I, I God don't, to tell us I don't think how it's to do that. That's not the point. world. We're going to have to move on now, but I do appreciate your contribution. Marina, you were trying to come in. Yes, yeah. I just wanted to briefly pick up on the first point that the sister mentioned in that ultimately, it's my personal view that we are all worshipping something. Whether you believe in a faith and you're worshipping a god, a deity that you believe in, if you choose not to believe in that, I, I do believe, as the sister said, that you are choosing a belief in non-theistic a, a non -theistic path. So whether that be, okay, I'm not going to worship a deity, but rather instead I'm going to be a narcissist and worship myself, or I'm going to worship my career, or I'm going to worship the environment.